Gotta break that off in there. Alright, welcome back party people. Today we're gonna do 50 hour service on our Rock Shock Super Deluxe Rear Shock. Alright, but first we're gonna flash back to yesterday's video where I walk you through how I obtained the part number for the actual service kit and also why I go to the manufacturer's website and look at the tech docs and the service manuals to understand what detailed steps are involved in the actual maintenance to make sure I have all the tools prepared. And if I need to fabricate a new tool, then I go ahead and do that in advance. And also, do I have the skill to actually perform the service? Okay, everybody, as I mentioned, out in the garage, I am inside now and I am going to check on the 50 hour service for my rock shocks shock and so what i'm going to do and this is something like i do for all the different parts that i like to do service on myself as a kind of diy type of person the first thing i do is go to the manufacturer's website and i find that part and i actually look at what the part number is for that part um, that gives me a sense of of what is included in the kit as well as the part number to order that way i don't order the wrong thing where I don't ask for the wrong part from the bike shop. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Rock Shock's website. We're gonna go to the service area and find the service manuals for performing the 50 hour service as well as what's included in that to make sure that I am well, I am capable of actually doing that service. There's not some special type of tool I need to kind of fabricate before I start to do this maintenance. So. You may have heard last week my shock tunnel has a bit of damage in the inside there so i want to take inspection of that damage to see how bad it is and if it's not super bad what i'll do and if it's not too bad what i'll do is just put some um, helicopter tape inside that shock tunnel to further protect it so without further ado let's uh let's let's get on rock shock site and uh have a look around so you know, one of the questions that I get asked as I'm navigating over to this site, um, one of the questions I get asked on some of the forums sometime is, how many volume spacers are in your super deluxe shop? And I can say without a doubt, it's very easy to find from the manufacturer usually. That is if the bike manufacturer has not altered the shock in any way. Um, usually the diagrams that are included in the literature for the OEM of the shock will actually depict pretty accurately in most cases how many volume spacers are actually in the shock and you don't even need to open up the shock. Now, doing a shock service, I know this can seem like a daunting task to most people because when you look at the shock, it's like a walnut. How do you get inside this thing and what do you need to do in order to service it? Well, it's not that bad actually. So if you're a pretty handy DIYer, you can save yourself some money and you can learn more about how the shock is actually uh, designed and developed. And uh, I just think it's really cool. So me being a DIY person, I like to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, find the service manual for this. So I navigated over to the site here and I think my camera view is actually covering the menu here, but there is a service button at the top right corner of the website. And so I'll just kind of click on that and scroll through the bottom here. And uh, right here on the right hand side, so you know, SRAM owns Rock Shop. So make sure you're clicking in the right area, otherwise, you're not going to find the things that you want. So here we go down here to Rear Shocks. I'm just going to click on that. And I'm going to use some of the filters that are available on the left hand side of the screen over here. You can see these. So I know I have a super deluxe, so I'm going to filter down to super deluxe. And then we're probably going to go down to uh, service manuals we want included as well as, um, well, it looks like they're only let me pick one of those filters at a time. So I'm going to click on spare parts catalog and the reason I'm clicking on spare parts catalog and is because uh, there will be an exploded view of the internals of the shock um, and also the externals of the shop to a degree the internals and that will tell you kind of what you're looking at and so if I click on this and uh, I am going to look at the table of contents here and it says for rear suspension super deluxe is on page 134 135 so 
I'm just going to scroll down here and see if we can get close to page 134, 135. And we're getting hotter, we're getting hotter, we're getting hotter. We're getting really hot, we're getting really hot. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy. Stop! All right, so let's scroll up here and make sure I'm on the right. All right, so Super Deluxe is the 2017 model. And uh, actually, yes. So the Deluxe, Super Deluxe 2017, you can see highlighted here. And this is the part number for the 50-hour service kit. So when I'm ordering the part, I make sure I am referencing this particular part number. So I'm just going to copy that into my buffer on the computer for later when I start to order this part. Or I may take it to the bike shop and ask if they can order. It depends. Uh, usually they're slower than actually ordering from the web. So I may just do it um, uh, as e-commerce. But we shall see. All right, so we know the part number, and if we take a look at the exploded view of this actual shock, you notice that there, by default, there's three volume spacers here. So I'm circling this around with my mouse, and it's highlighted by the number 10 here. So you can see here there's three volume spacers, and that's typically the amount of volume spacers that will be in a super deluxe shock, especially if you um, had the 2019 Bronson. It, it could be in the 2020 as well. I don't know uh, what's inside the new shock, which I think is called, the, um, is it the ultimate or something like that? But anyhow, this is a super deluxe. There's three volume spaces in there. So when I get at, when I actually receive this 50 hour kit and we move out to the garage to do the service, I expect when I open the canister that I will see three volume spacers. So, all right. So now we know the part number and we know how many volume spacers are in our shop. And if we had to, we would know all the different parts that and part numbers that we could order as spare parts if we had a damaged shock. I fortunately do not, so I'm not worried about that. The one thing I will do is inspect some of the bushings here. Remember, this shock has a bearing on one side and a bushing on the other. So what I'm going to do when I take that shock out, I'm going to inspect the bushing and also inspect the bearing. And if they look good, which they should, um, then we won't do anything to those and uh, we'll just continue the service. All right, so now that we've got an idea about what the part number is and what our shot looks like internally, I'm going to go to the service manual because the service manual actually tells and lists the steps of what to do. Now, yes, there are tons of YouTube videos out there from SRAM and Rock Shots and other folks that go through 50 hour services, but I like to refer back to the documentation just to make sure that there's no tools. Um, um, that I have the capability to actually perform the service myself with no problem, that I don't need to fabricate some kind of special tool before I get the part number in. The last, the, the thing I hate the most about the DIY type of stuff is you get the part in, you're ready to do the work, and then you find out, oh, I don't have a strap wrench, or I don't have this, or I don't have the right size um, bearing uh, pusher or puller, or whatever it may be, so I want to make sure I've got any tool I need fabricated, fabricated before the part comes in. So. Let's move over to our service manual and uh, we'll take a look at what that entails. And I'll just clear off the spare parts here and we'll move to our service manual. I click on that and uh, we're going to go down here and start to, uh, I think we'll have a table of contents here. We definitely will have a, uh, so we've got some more exploded view stuff here, different shocks, and we should be. Uh, yes, 50 hour service intervals. Now, this is another important thing. And so one of the things you can do as a rider that will extend the life of your shock. And by the way, it's not just for shocks, but it's for front suspension forks. It can be for dropper posts, anything that has a inner tube and outer tube that has a dust wiper around to keep the unwanted bits of dirt and grime from getting inside of the actual internals of whatever device you're looking at. Clean the dust wiper, take a shop cloth and just gently, I like to twist clockwise and then up away from wherever the dust may fall into. And I do that every ride. And you can see here that uh, Rock Shocks actually recommends doing that and that the benefit is it extends wiper seal lifespan, minimizes the damage to the shock damper body, minimizes air can contamination. So there you have it straight from them. 
Here's our 50 hour service. Um, it says perform an air can service, so that's great. We only have to remove the air canister, not the, um, the negative volume canister. And so let's scroll down even further to find out what that may entail. And we've got a list of parts here. And I'm just going to find the uh, 50 hour maintenance section. All right, so here's our air can section. Uh, we can see the 50, it's part of the 50 hour service interval and it's part of the 200 hour service interval. I'm not even sure if I'll have the shock at 200 hours, but we'll do the 50 hour since. I've got about 65 hours worth of riding time on here. I've done a really good job at keeping the, uh, the shock clean, the shock damper clean. So hopefully I don't see too much issues in there and it should be pretty clean but we'll find out when we take it apart is it clean and it does it have it the three volume spacers that we saw in the document as well so all right so just looking through the service interval here it looks pretty simple you've got um some o-rings you got some seals you got some uh kind of replacement of those things that use basic pick um you've got to put it in the vise to remove the air canister there's an internal seal there you have to remove. Um, so it doesn't look that bad. And it looks like you have to put some grease on some rings and uh, just remove a few of the internal O-rings. And not bad at all. And it looks like the kit has everything you need in it to actually perform the service. So um, it doesn't look too bad. So well within uh, my capabilities, uh, I think this is one of the things that any kind of DIYer can do and uh, you'll save yourself some money and you kind of learn more about the shock too. So, all right, so now we know what it entails. We know we've got the right tools. Uh, we feel pretty confident in our abilities. Uh, we're gonna go try to find the part, get the part here. And once we source the part, we'll go outside in the garage and we'll actually do our 50 hour maintenance. All right, so I am just gonna bring up another tab here and I'm just gonna paste in our part number there. And just for giggles, I'm just gonna put the part number in just to see. Nah, let's just see. Hey, look what comes up. Very first worldwide cyclery 50 hour service kit uh, for about 31 bucks. It's free shipping. Uh, pretty good deal if you wanted to order from worldwide cyclery. I would imagine, or cyclery, I would imagine you could probably do a similar on Amazon. Uh, even, Amazon may even be a, in the, well, let's just put, post the uh, part number. Again, same thing. Amazon's a little bit more expensive, but it is prime free delivery by Thursday. Uh, one of the things I will warn folks of, do not trust the diagrams on, on Amazon. Uh, here you can see this is a 50 hour service kit, but if you look at the diagram, there is a bunch of metal parts in here, bushings. There's like a new Schrader valve. Uh, there's a new cap for the air canister for the valve, a bunch of other bits. That is not part of the 50 hour service, so take note of that. And if you read the details in the listing here, you can see what includes in the kit. So it says no hard parts included. And that means all of these springs and stuff, that's not included in the kit. So um, World Ride Cyclery actually has a more accurate picture of what is in the kit. And you can see here, it's just some seal, some seals, uh, new O-rings and uh, some shock oil and some grease for the shock itself. So now I have to make a determination where to order from, how fast do I need it to get here, and would I just go to my bike shop to order this. Once we get that taken care of, we'll get the part and we'll go out in the garage and do our 50 hour service. October rain, they're back again. Oh my goodness, look at the van, all right. All right, so we're back. So the first thing I usually do is I bring the tablet out to the garage and I have up all the different websites. So I have up the RockShox website to the service manuals so I can look at the detailed steps that's involved. And also I bring up the Santa Cruz site so uh, I can look at the torque specs for the linkage and the shock. I'm not sure if I'm gonna take the linkage out today. It depends on how well the shock service goes. So the first thing I wanna do is actually tie up this triangle to the top tube and the seat tube to keep it from dropping. I think it will be pretty stable, but as we remove the shock, I think we're probably gonna see some movement there. So I'm gonna tie it up to make sure it isn't dropped down and hurt anything on the front or damage anything on the frame. Then we're gonna put our shock pump on the air, the Schrader valve here and determine what our air pressure is and record that. 
The second thing we'll do, or the third thing we'll do is actually record the values we have here for our rebound setting so we can put that back to the way we had it before the service. And then we will proceed to actually remove the shock bolts. So let's get to it. All right, I am just gonna use some of these bungee uh, ties. Remove the Schrader valve cap and I'm going to record the shock pressure. So we're at 180 pounds. Um, that is way low. That's probably why I felt some of the squat. So it seems like we've lost a little bit of air in this thing. I think I run it around 195, maybe even 200 psi. So um, that's interesting. Be careful not to lose the flip chip. Finish removing the front bolt and let's see be careful with the bushings and we'll just remove our shot as such just gonna give this a quick wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol and just kind of clear any of the uh, debris that's on the shot can all right so we have our clean shock now all right, so I'm just gonna record my settings. This particular shock does not have any compression settings on it. So I'm just gonna do the rebound. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's 10, 10 clicks of rebound on this shock and I was right in the middle. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, now that uh, we have our shock off of the bike, I'm gonna actually release the air from the shock and I'm just going to do it slowly here. So I'm just going to take the end of my little Schrader tool here and just slowly release the air here. Just remember it's high pressure. And you'll see the shock retract. And then once you get all the air all the way down, what you want to do is actually take your uh, Schrader valve tool and unscrew the valve. And to make sure all of the air is released from the shock. And that should be good. All right, and so we'll just twist this back in. put our cap back on there we go all right so the next thing we're going to do is actually clamp the shock into the vise all right we have our shock clamped in the vise all right now we're going to get our strap wrench and remove the canister we've got a couple of different sizes here i don't know which one is going to work the best i'm going to start with a small one first all right then we'll just see if we can't turn this to loosen it yep there we go and then you just pull it there's going to be some vacuum pressure there along the shaft like that and voila now in order to remove the air canister completely from the shock we're going to need to remove our eyelet here and that is just two number three hex bolts in the end here oh did i break that off in there all right so my allen tool actually my tip broke off into the bolt head so i've got to go try and back that out so once i can get that backed out then i can remove this in and we can continue service all right so just an update on where i'm at here so i was about to take the end of the bearing mount off of the shock so i could slip the canister off and dang if i didn't snap off the end of my hex wrench into the bolt head there so i've got to try to figure out how to get that off but the other thing i noticed is when i took the shock off is that the uh the bleed screw for the damper body was leaking fluid out as well and i haven't played with it at all so either a seal's gone bad in there or, or there was an o-ring missing or something 
So now I've got to figure out how to get this snapped off hex wrench out of this shot mount, the bearing mount, so that I can remove the canister and finish the 50 hour service maintenance on this shock. So knowing that I've also have a bleed port that's leaking as well, there may be other options. Stay tuned uh, and uh, you'll see what I've chosen for this particular shot. I could easily go try to drill that uh, screw out and then buy a new mount for the bearing end of that shock and also probably fix that bleed screw. I'm going to spend some money doing that. I'm going to spend a lot of time doing that. So I want to explore all my options. So we'll see what happens. So that was a quite an interesting outcome. I'm going to end the video here. You know what to do. Skill up and ride. Fan up and go.